One of the key ways to make sure your branding looks consistent is to create a brand guidelines document, which is basically a set of rules that you follow as to how the branding is applied. In today's episode, I'm going to show you what to include in your brand guidelines and how to create something that is easy to share and update. Let's head straight into InDesign. First, we're going to create a file for web as I'm planning to publish my brand guidelines on the web so that I can share them easily with people. So I'm going to select this document size. I'm going to create 12 pages and I'm going to go with eight columns and I'm going to click create. So I'm going to head over to pages and I'm going to create a parent page. So I'm going to double click on a parent and then I'm going to get my CC libraries and I'm going to start adding elements to it. So first up, I'm going to change the background color. So I want to have all of the pages, the cream color that I chose for the brand. I'm also going to bring in some guides so I can just drag my guides down from the rulers. If you don't have the rulers up, then just go to view, show rulers or command R if you want to use the shortcut. And then I'm just going to drag the guides down. So I'm going to have a guide for where I want my headings to sit. And then I'm going to have a guide just below it for where I want my text and the content of the page to start. Now, next up, I want to add some page numbers. So I'm going to get the ellipse tool and I'm going to make a little circle in the bottom right hand corner, make it the brand color, the beige, and then I'm going to write a, so I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to make it my brand font. And I'm just going to bring that down into the circle here. Now, one thing I would recommend doing is actually center aligning uh, this text box so that when the numbers go up to double figures, it's still going to look okay. Now to make sure that this works for page numbers, I'm going to highlight it and then I'm going to go to type, insert special character, go to markers and I'm going to choose current page number. So now when we go back to our document, you will see that all of these elements that I have put on the master page are appearing and I've got it numbering here from page number one. Now it might be that you want to have cover on your front page which is what I'm going to do and you want your numbering to start from this second page so what you need to do is just click on control or right click and then go to numbering and section options and then you go start page numbering at one and it's going to be on this page so just click ok and then you'll see now that We've got one here, but it then starts one again. And so I'm just going to either cover over this or I can click on control, override all parent items, and I can just delete this page number because I don't need it. So now we've set the parent page, it's a time to start designing the brand guidelines. So what I did was went to Windows CC libraries and made sure that my library was open. So I had access to everything that I needed. So I set up my cover page. I've got a small content section. So every page has got this green banner on the left hand side. And if I just click off, you'll see that my guides and my columns, my grid is set up how I did it on the parent page. So that's been applied to every page. I've brought in icons, images, use the brand colors, use the brand fonts all the way through so that the actual brand guidelines document looks on brand as well, which I think is a really nice touch. You'll see that the elements that I added to the parent page are down here at the bottom. So the page number and the website, and these um, can't be selected or changed because they're on the parent page. If you do want to update them, you can just head to pages and go to the parent page and update them. If you've got a change that you want to make on just one page. So for example, let's say on this page, I want the page number to appear on top of the image, but it's not going to do that because it's on the parent page. So what I can do is click control and I can click override all parent page items. And now if I just send my image to back, and make sure that I send the background back as well. Now I have my page number on top. So this is how I've set up my brand guidelines. I've started off with an intro, so about us, then got into the values, the sort of core elements of the business, then gone straight in with the logo and sharing what the clear space should be around the logo. And I'm using this panel on the left to give some notes and some explanation of what people can see on the page. I've given them information about the different file types that have been supplied. So these are the file types that we created in the logo episode. We've then got the color palette and I've supplied all the color breakdowns. So hex code, RGB, CMYK and Pantone. I've given some examples of incorrect usage. And I think this is really important because 
the temptation is going to be for clients or other people using the brand to just make little tweaks and adjustments that you might not be happy with. So just give them some examples of what they should not do. Next up, we've got the font. So I've just laid them out with the alphabet so they can see how they look. And I also have included a link of where they can download those fonts or get access to them. I've then got the icons, the patterns, the brand in use. I think it's also helpful to do this. So if anybody else is creating designs based from your brand guidelines, they've got some examples to work from. And then at the end, I've got a back page, which is get in touch. And I've created these buttons, which I'm going to make hyperlinks of so that people can access the assets. Now I have to shout out Claire Dubergine here, who did an incredible session at Adobe Max all about brand guidelines. This is how she set up her final page of her brand guidelines. And I think it is brilliant. Let me quickly show you how we turn one of these into a hyperlink. So highlight the text that you want to hyperlink. And then we're going to head up to type hyperlinks and cross references, and then new hyperlink. And all we're going to do is we're going to type in the URL. So I've created a folder in my Dropbox that has all of the logos and assets in. And so I'm just going to copy that link over here. And then we just click OK and you'll see that it's given it an underline and change the color. You can change that color. Blue is pretty common in terms of what people expect, but you could change that to one of your brand colors. And now that's made that a clickable link. So now we're happy with how the branding is looking. We've added the hyperlinks. What we can do is we can publish this online. And this is one of the brilliant tips that I got from Clardy at her session at Adobe Max. I've put the link below so that you can check it out and watch. But what you need to do is go to file, publish online, and then you can fill in the information. So a bit of a description, you can password protect it. So I'm just going to type in a password. Um, and then if you go to advanced, there's a few different things that you can change, like the thumbnail, you can upload a thumbnail. But one of the things I think is important to do is to allow viewers to download the document as a PDF, because that means they can store it on their computer as well if they need to. So we're going to click publish and it's then going to give us a link that we can share. So I'm just going to copy link and I'm going to head to Google and just paste that link in. Then this is the window that's going to come up. So if I just type in the password, now I have access to the brand guidelines and I also have the option to download it. Now, what is great about this is if once I create the brand guidelines down the line, I spot a spelling mistake or some information is updated, or I realize here, for example, that this header has gone slightly out of line, which it has, then I can just go back into the document. I can fix the layout, put it back where it's supposed to be. And then what I can do is go file, publish online, and we're going to click on update existing document. So we're going to republish the one that we've done. And this means that the link will still be the same. So you don't have to resend the link to everybody, but you still manage to update those guidelines. So I'm just going to click publish. Are you sure you wish to update the existing link with this document? And I'm going to click OK. So that is how we share it online. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is there might be a scenario where you want your client or a team member to be able to edit the document. So if we go to file, there's now an option to export to Adobe Express. So I'm just going to click export to Adobe Express. It's going to open up Chrome. And here we have the document in Adobe Express. And you'll see that I can go in, I can edit the text. If I spot any spelling mistakes, if anyone needs to change anything, they can scroll through and they can edit all of these pages. Now, what I want to do now that I've brought this into Adobe Express, I want other people to be able to edit it. So what I'm going to do is click share and I'm going to make a template. So I'm going to call it Wisk Brand Guidelines. And you'll see already it's going to save it to my Wisk Branding Brand Kit, which we made in an earlier episode. I can write a note, save the note and then click save template. So now if I go to brands over in the menu on the left and click on Wisp branding, you will see that the brand guidelines have been saved in the template section there. So you'll see that the brand kit has all come together really nicely. And we now have on brand brand guidelines. We can share these with anyone on our team and anyone that we're working with. And it's going to really help in making everything really clear and consistent for our branding. If you don't want to start from scratch with creating your brand guidelines, you can find a link to the InDesign brand guideline template and the Adobe Express brand guideline template below. So feel free to grab those and use them for your branding going forward. If you have any questions, pop them below and don't forget to subscribe to Adobe Live.